look, uh, when I was a child, I dreamed to be a soccer, soccer, soccer player. As probably 99% of the Brazilian kids. Soccer is on the kids veins, it runs like blood. You breathe it, you learn a lot from it. And it's part of the culture. And uh, if, if you look at Brazil, it might be one of the only few things that Brazil produce as world top quality and class. You know, even if I do believe Brazil produce other athletes in, in different kind of sports. On regards to the uh, Hong Kong people really loving Brazilians, I didn't feel it, to be honest, in, in the last year, sorry, in the last World Cup. I went over to a bar with a few friends and we were watching Brazil playing against, uh, uh, what is the name that beat them? Belgium. And I was around people like, looks like I fall into a place where there was only Belgian support, supporters. And I felt horrible. It might not be describing the entire country, but that was my experience on regard, on regards to uh, who the Hong Kongs really support. Uh, if Brazil might be playing against some others, I wouldn't be surprised that Hong Kong support Brazil because Brazil has has had so much success is the only team that has won five times the world cup i came over to hong kong and i was able to pass on trust and confidence to people that were supporting me and i, I was also very impressed how many people actually join me uh, start liking my writing style and maybe even be supporting me you know betting on my horses uh, from the beginning the, the numbers of people that start getting know me and stop me on the street that was so big and so, so quickly and here that um, even if I don't win a race I, those people still have the trust and the good feeling about how I rode a race or how much I did try in, in, in my rides uh, they express that, that appreciation to me every time I go out on the streets, you know, and it's, it, it is a pleasure. It is something that me, a, a, a man that came from, from a place which we were so humble. We, we had pretty much nothing. I, I could not, never even dream being a jockey in Hong Kong. Hong Kong would be for these people around the world nowadays, for me, those days back then, like how, how much chance people from Hong Kong has to go to Mars and they have plans to send people to Mars in 20 to 30 years time. So for me to leave Curitiba and end up in Hong Kong maybe 20 years ago, that, that would be the, the distance between it be happening. It's not just timing, but the chance is nearly, nearly nothing. I could never even think about it. And here we are, and I'll be talking about, about you a little bit about uh, how much success I have had in Hong Kong, uh, the pleasures I had, and also not just only about horse racing. This place provides me so many different opportunities. I got to know so many different kinds of people. I've been to so many beautiful and nice places and more. The best part of it, that is many and plenty yet to come. So I'm nothing else but very pleasure of what Hong Kong has provided to me. And I'm not only talking about horse racing, I'm talking about the country overall. So how I bring everything that I have learned from soccer to horse racing, it's actually, it's in my opinion, a joke that are not able to have those points that I mentioned, which is uh, reflex, being able to be uh, communicating well with people, have a very, uh, very good sense of direction and movement, and also being able to deal with many kind of different situations. So too, what happened to soccer very much. When somebody else tell you a word which you didn't want to hear and then you feel like telling them off, if you don't know how to deal with those situations, 
it can get into your mind, into your nerves, even into your heart. Soccer actually develop a lot of motor skills, reflex, social skills, and it all the jockeys need. And need to have it in big numbers. Like, if you're not able to be a good communicate with people very well, you're gonna struggle when you're getting to horse racing. If you're not able to hold on pressure and deal with very tough situations like people telling you words that you wouldn't want to hear and sometimes you may, may tell them off and then that affects your career as a jockey and and some more like in brazil in particular when you're playing soccer with those kids uh, i'll give you one example that i actually told my son the other day um i remember that we used to have no much, right? So maybe we walk on the street only having the shoes on and shorts, not even t-shirts. So then everybody else playing soccer barefoot. So then they would say, I'm not playing against you if you're wearing shoes. So take the shoes off. So we used to take the shoes off and put the shoes on, on, on the streets, in the middle of the street. We block the streets and we put the shoes there. And we used to make the, 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 the shoes as goals, you know, as bars of the goals. But when you're playing there, you have to be having one of your eyes on the ball. The otherwise, you gotta be looking at your foot or your shoes. Otherwise, somebody else go there. Either they tie up the laces and take your shoes and throw on the electricity, electricity wires, or somebody else will take your shoes and bring home. So, it develops many kind of skills on you. You've got to be watching all around. And these kind of things, no doubt, uh, helps me when I come to the races. I, I, I gotta, gotta say that I do have good reflex. My motor skill is very good as well. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be able to be jockey. If you wanna be a jockey, you gotta be able to move your body and also be able to build up strength because it requires so much horse racing that of you. If you're not able to, to produce that, you, know, you won't last, you won't, you won't even make it into horse racing. I honestly never thought about it, but I could see, of course, I could see the consequence. Thumbs up, I'm quite surprised you say you see something different in me. But the whip throwing, it's quite unique. I never thought that was gonna be so impacting. And it's actually, it's good marketing. I never done, I, I did not plan to do it intentionally to promote racing or promote myself or whatever. But I could see as, as I start, started off, some people start getting excited and some of them come to me and say, uh, I, want, I want to catch your, your whip because it, it, it's, at the, First place is very difficult to throw it at the right spot when the horse is moving. As it's quite difficult for some people to catch it when it's coming from so high, you know? So sometimes I throw it up, sometimes it goes straight to the ground and some, most of the time trainers or assistant trainer are able to catch it. But what, what are the consequences? People actually like it. Uh, will definitely make it a very nice picture. Second, uh, some of the, the trainer has already expressed it to me that they would love to catch my whip coming, coming down when I throw it. That means it's a kind of a celebration, something adding to the celebration of a win, which all of us, that's all that all of us wanted, you know? We all wanna win races and when we win and whatever thing you add, onto it as a positive as a cheers it's always welcome and this is a very good example i will take it as a, as a kind of a device and i'll take it i'll take it as a, with a much pleasure because i know as you mentioned nowadays it is a hard time for everyone else this pandemic time which we never know when it's going to end it's it's giving us a like a hard time it's been difficult and i know it's very important for those people that are uh, maybe locked up at home and haven't got much to do outside being able to 
to have access to some sport activities, uh, even if it's online or on TVs. So I know what you're trying to say. It's very meaningful. It's a great tip and I'll make very, very good use of it. First thing we're going to do, we're going to name it. I haven't got a name yet, but I will. And it is a promise of myself to everyone else. More and more often now, I'll be throwing the whips, even if I have to throw it to someone else that is not even expecting, or even if I have to throw it to someone else that is not even part of the team of those particular horses that I'll be winning on. So, yeah, it's great. I love the idea. When you're talking about it, uh, Hans, it actually kind of bubble in myself, the feeling of seeing people out there at the races. It is it's tough for us to go to the race and you look around, there is nobody there. I have ridden in Brazil for nearly a decade and most of the time that we were riding, there was nearly nobody at the grandstand. So when I came over, so over there during my time in Brazil in particular, I used to dream riding for a big public, you know, big crowd and people cheering up. So then I had my opportunity to ride here in Hong Kong where nearly every, every race meeting that is like nearly 30,000 at least at the grandstand, suddenly nobody there. It creates such a sad atmosphere, shows that what we're going through is really serious. And when you talk about it all, makes me feel like, oh my God, let's hope it goes away quickly. Somehow some uh, labs are able to produce whatever they have to produce to get us out of the situation. Because all that we want is to get back to normal and get people back into, into their jobs and normal life, you know? No doubt that being locked up at home most of the time with the family, it kind of creates a different kind of a relationship. Not create, but really brings you to the roots of what is family relationship, you know? And you will start to learn, understand more the members of the family, your children, your wife, your mothers. And it, it's a plus. It's always a plus because sometimes from being working so much and only concentrate on working, you forget about who is really important in life to you which is no doubt job would, should never be put up, up in front. And I don't. Uh, of course, I, I'm not perfect to, to anyone else, neither to my family, but no doubt that I love them as much. And whatever I do, whatever we plan to do in the future is for their own best, you know, for the best of my, my the, the family. And I know being, being at home and, not having much to do, it's, it's a difficult time, yes. It's dep depression can get into you. But really, if you are a healthy person, if, you, if you're able to have a meal on your table every day, you should just put your hands up and be very thankful to God because, yes, that is people, they are not even having a meal a day. And, or maybe if they do have, they rather to pass it on their, to their children so they, if someone else is to really struggle and maybe even lose their life. If I'm a father, I'd rather to lose myself than lose my children. And those people, how am I gonna be able to help them? I may not be able to help them much, but come up with a pray, ask God to find ways, move, don't expect things to fall from, from, from the sky into your lap. It's not gonna happen, but go ask others. and. There is so many people around the world that has got good heart. You, you can always find somebody else who is willing and able to help you out. Even if it's with just one advice, you know, just go to a place or go and talk with this person or uh, here, here you are, you can have this meal instead of uh, I'm having myself. Now it's, it's, never, it's never too late to be helping others. It's an opportunity for all of us to look to our brothers and sisters and treat them how they should be treated, with respect, love, and attention. And that's how 
I treat others and that's how I expect people to treat me as well, you know? So that would be my advice to whoever is watching this interview. We can't just look at ourselves and run our life and our business only thing about how we are going to be able to satisfy ourselves because uh, that is other people that has got needs as well. And that is other functions of the entire company that need one sectors of the company to go well so it gets to their hands in good shape so you can carry on working. It's, it's a chain. So I said that to you and I mean that. I understand the media, it's very important to whatever, whatever sport, whatever business. And we should respect all the people that are involved. They got a job to do. They, some of them do not do it professionally, but I would say majority of them do. And then it's not difficult to figure out who are professional and who, they, who, who are not. And then even those that are not, just try to treat them with respect. And if you are professional yourself, you might be teaching a lesson to those ones that are not. You know, so yes, we all got to be example to others. And you know, I, 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 I want to share something with you. Uh, I, get, I get a lot of questions from, I wouldn't say names or whatever, but they know what I'm talking about. From jockeys, up, academy tutors or jockeys academy mentors or you know these guys they call me and and ask me questions and they 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 kind of get impressed of what i can come up with with regards to answers because what happens is is everyone everyone else has come from different environment and no doubt the environment that i came from it's extremely different than what it is around around here in asia I would say so yes share not even if it has to be information don't keep it for yourself it's not going to change your life you give somebody else a tip or share some experience you have had in the past even those that those some of those people that if they think uh you can't give away your tricks to others so they will beat you now it's not true because if they come into you and trying to learn stuff from you first open doors for you to learn something from, from them as well second they are catching up you, you got the, the room to improve and 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 step up as well so don't sit at home do nothing try to learn always respect others and just be pleasure and thankful for, for life you only got one don't waste it Well, you should put it as a target. Eventually, one day you're going to be there. And if I see you, I'll throw it up as high as I can. And let's see if we can catch it. I can't wait to get back into racing, into the races and see the crown of the grandstand full of people, the crown cheering up. And every time now, from now on, that I throw a whip up, I will remember this conversation we have had. And... And it's no doubt is a very sensible meaning behind it. I, uh, honestly, I don't even know myself. Oh, it sorry. has been a gift from my, for a gift from my wife. <laughs>